You are listening to an exclusive on PodHub Network. Your city, your podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Back to the Bird, presented by the PodHub Network. My guest today is an up-and-coming recording artist from Beaver, PA. His first EP drops this Saturday, November 7th. But before you get to listen to his work, let's get to know him from his roots in Beaver County. Please welcome my guest, Justin Murphy. Murph. Hey, what's going on? What's going what's on, What's up, bro? brother? How you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Chilling. So let's get into your childhood. We kind of grew up together. We, I wouldn't say we yeah, were like I was gonna say, super yeah. close, but we were yeah. definitely in each other's lives. Oh, no. Yeah, for sure. Especially especially the elementary school days, college square. Oh, yeah. you know, we were, oh college yeah, we, square. Yeah. That's a throwback. <laughs> those are those are the serious, the serious good old days right there, man. Hell yeah. So since this is originally like a sports based show, what, what sports did you play growing up? Like what, what what was your favorite and what all did you play? Would you rank them? I played I, I tried it all pretty much, at least when we were, you know, when we were in elementary school, I, I played soccer, football, basketball. I uh I tried fall ball one year for baseball and I was, I was terrible. So um, <laughs> I gave up on that pretty quick, but yeah, I played soccer till I was probably 18. Basketball was probably my favorite though. We just, Oh really? We, uh, yeah. We grew up, you know, in the, uh, when we were real young in elementary school, we had a pretty, we had a pretty solid team coming up and everybody was, you know, excited to see us get to high school. And then I quit probably. <laughs> <laughs> like seventh grade I want to say yeah <laughs> uh, like yeah about 12 years old started skateboarding and that you know that pretty much changed everything you know I'm I still skate to this day so that's uh that was definitely a huge <laughs> a huge switch up for me going from basketball every day to skating out in the streets and whatnot yeah so let's t- let's talk about the skateboarding because there was like half the kids like everybody growing up was athletic but then it got to oh, half yeah. of us are gonna stay with sports and half of us are gonna go skateboard and do whatever the hell. Yeah, we want. there was there was definitely some serious beef there for a little bit. I remember okay. middle school yeah, yeah. middle school was there was a lot of tension in middle school. <laughs> yeah, because it was like all the athletes were like, Oh, you, you can be an athlete. We were like everybody's dad. We were like, Oh, you can yeah, play, yeah, exactly. you can play basketball, you can go pro. Like you can't go to college. Well, you yeah, guys yeah, exactly. you guys like kind of the you matured faster i think and you're just like man i'm gonna live my life (laughs) yeah 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 you know we just yeah we were we were just trying to you know try some different things and some good some bad you know but (laughs) hey the bad i think both sides got some of the bad we all experienced that (laughs) oh yeah yeah no doubt no doubt but yeah, so, that was definitely an interesting time, especially because, you know, I was still good friends with everybody who, you know, all the jocks, you know, everybody who yeah. still played sports, but they were, hated some of my friends and vice versa. <laughs> so. But we, uh, we all made it out okay, though. By high school, I think we were all, we were all pretty tight. Yeah, absolutely. So who, how did you, not who, maybe who, how did you get introduced to skateboarding? Because I know me well, growing up, it was like, okay, I watched Tony Hawk in the X Games. That was pretty cool. I played this video yeah, game, yeah. but I, the moment I got a skateboard, I was like, nah, that's not for me. So how did you- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so pretty much like me, uh, me and, me and Chandler, you know, Chandler, we would, we would like, we, when we were like 10 or 11, you know, we'd be like riding scooters around Beaver and stuff, you know, just like messing around and Sam Suica and, you know, Matt Hawthorne and Luke, all them, like they, uh, they were skating. And we kind of, you know, saw them around town and ended up becoming friends and whatnot. And I, I remember I talked to Sam and Tug too. Yeah. And we were like, we were like, man, like you got to teach us, you know? And so I remember the first, I think like my second day or whatever, I landed a pop shove it or something. And I was like, dude, like, this is like, it, this you is know? Cool. I was like, this, yeah, I was like, yeah, like, this is, this is something I could stick with. No, no coaches telling me anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, was just, I was free to do what I wanted to do, so. That's and awesome. then that kind of that kind of sparked that mentality though, which you know went in <laughs> good and bad directions as well, you know. Yeah, it kind of the way I see it is that it kind of brought about like a self governance. Yeah, yes, yeah, right? exactly, exactly. It kind of a little a little attitude, you know. We're like, you know, we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna do whatever we want, you know, because 
because we can. Yeah. So I know in, in high school, you were, people knew you were kind of like a, a music guy. Like you, we knew you could sing. We knew you yeah. had rhythm, like all this, all this stuff. When did you realize, I think I want to do music. I think I want to do that as, like did it develop from a hobby into something you had bigger aspirations for? Or how did that all come about? It was kind of like, I had been singing and humming and beatboxing, like since I was like really young, you know, like I used to, I used to annoy my parents like crazy, like just, (laughs) (laughs) just beatboxing, walking down the hall in the house and whatnot, you know, same with teachers. I wouldn't even realize I was doing it, you know, I'd just be like beatboxing or humming something in class. They'd just be like, who's doing that? But so it was, I don't know, it it always just kind of came naturally, you know what I mean? I always just kind of had like a tune in my head, but it was probably, I started writing songs when I was about like 15 or 16 after I, like a couple years of skating and, you know, listening to like, there was there was a lot of inspiration too around that time. Music was really cool. Like hip hop was was really really cool back then. Like Kid Cudi was releasing Man on the Moons. Yeah, absolutely. So like, whenever whenever Chance the Rapper released Acid Rap, I wanted to get one, into that. <laughs> that one hit me hard, man. That one hit me really hard. I was like, dude, I need to I need to get on this. Like I know you know I like I got I got the flow. I need you know. So I I started writing songs. That was, I think that was 2013 or something when he came out with that. And I saw him in concert at the altar bar, like a couple months after he dropped acid rap. Yeah. And that's, that was, that was a big moment when I knew I was like, dude, this is, this is something I definitely, I definitely could see myself doing, you know? That's really cool. Like I just got chills from that story. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I, you mentioned acid rap and I wanted to bring that up because I remember when acid rap released nobody knew who chance the rapper was except for you and now I remember yeah, yeah. we were in high school we we're all in the hallway i'm like why is everybody like crowded around justin right now <laughs> and you're literally just like showing everybody like yo you gotta listen to this you gotta listen to this guy chance the rapper acid rap this is awesome yeah and you literally were the pipeline for our high school <laughs> to listen oh, yeah, to chance sure. the rapper. i gotta i gotta give some credit to my brother too my brother he he showed me one song off of it i forget which one it was but soon as I heard it, I was like, this is it, dude. I was like, I got to show everybody I know this. Like, That's awesome. Like, yeah, no, I, was, give, I, I, give my so brother credit. I give my brother credit for uh, introducing me to Childish Gambino, Donald Glover. Oh, oh, for sure. For he, sure, he yeah. He me, was another uh, game changer. He showed me which Freaks and Geeks. And I was like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, this is dope. <laughs> I was like, this is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that me and my friends both- dove into him. And they both, you know, they both have like a real original sound that like I had, you know, like yeah. hip hop had never heard before. I had never heard before. And I was like, man, like, I I think I could, you know, I think I could definitely get into this. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, I obviously had, I had a lot of support too. You know, my brother, my family, all my friends, they were all like, you know, they all, they, they were all very supportive of what I was doing. And I just, for some reason, I slacked on recording for like many, <laughs> many years. I've been, you know, like I said, I've been writing songs since I was 15 or 16. Yeah. And I got 400 notes in my phone, you know, but I got like <laughs> one song on Apple Music and I got five more coming out on this EP. Yeah. So I definitely have a long way to go, but, you know, I'm definitely trying to get it started. Yeah. So before we get into all that, what was, what was your path post um, high school? Did you go to school for music? Did you, what, what was uh, the path yeah. there? Yeah, it was crazy because looking back, it was, I think it was like eighth grade. I did a little, like, we had to create a pamphlet in some class that I took with Mrs. Guantolo. And um, I did it. It was, it was like a career path that we wanted, you know, that we could see ourselves in. And it was music yeah. producing. I didn't even, I didn't even realize I had done that until it was like after my senior year. And I went back and was looking at a couple of things. And I was like, dude, like, you know, that's, that's crazy. I was thinking about that all the way back you know, all the way back then. So yeah, right after high school, I found a, uh, like a recording trade school, like an audio engineering trade school pretty yeah. much. And it was out in the middle of nowhere in Chillicothe, Ohio. And like, we lived in these, like they had bunk beds, like they were little cabins in the woods. Really? It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And 
you walk down this hill like you're like I said you're in the woods you walk down this hill and there's this big building and it just had like five professional studios in it like wow. the best you know the best of the it was 2016 I think 2015 whatever it was and like the best of the best equipment and so I stayed out there for two months you know no tvs or anything in the cabins like it was just straight like indulging in it you know yeah, yeah. And it was it was honestly the best experience I could have asked for because I knew regular college wasn't wasn't my route you know I knew I, I didn't like school that much I like being there I like being with people you know I would I'd walk down the hall with a speaker and you know play music yeah. and whatnot <laughs> like it was a good time for sure but yeah I think I had to try something different you know so that was that was a really great experience I ended up making a mixtape with a couple dudes there that uh it's on SoundCloud somewhere I've I was gonna say, where's that at? I haven't heard it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we we were we were assigned team six. You know, there were different teams and they kind of tried to set you up with your own genre, you know, like all the yeah. dudes who were into hip hop were on team six. So the last like three days of school, we we skipped class completely and just sat in this one big house and just recorded an entire mixtape. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so it, it was yeah, it was such a cool experience, you know. And so I got out of that and tried to find some internships in studios and stuff like that, but nothing really worked out. So I just kind of wanted to do it on the side, you know, just as, as a thing for myself. Yeah. I was going to say, you still persisted and you're still were within your, that was your thing and you stayed with yeah, it. Yeah. And you released that single floating. I think that might've yeah. been like sophomore year of college. Yeah, it was 2017. Yeah, yeah so yeah. sophomore year of college. Sophomore year, yeah. I remember I was really excited. I was like, oh, he finally made something that like I can play. <laughs> like, it was on Spotify, I think, or somewhere. SoundCloud, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was on SoundCloud. I found it on SoundCloud. Yeah. And I was I was in a fraternity, and we were out on our back deck, and I popped it on. I was like, let's see how people feel about this. Everybody loved it. They were like, yo, who is this? And I was like, that's awesome. (laughs) That's so sweet, man. But yeah, you you already have more fans than you know, I think, because I at Bethany College, I got to all those kids up in the woods (laughs) listening to your music, man. (laughs) I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. That's that's awesome, man. And yeah, I had I had a couple a couple of my good friends tell me similar stories. You know, they went to college and played it, and people, you know, people were really liking it. So it's it's I you don't hear much like it you know I feel so like I yeah. think I think it's definitely something that'll catch people's people's ears you know yeah so now let's get into your current work that's coming out this weekend what 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 should we expect should we expect like you know chill vibes should we expect you to like go off or what are we looking it's, at here? it's it's pretty funky you know there's okay you can, you can definitely yeah you're definitely gonna groove to it but um, like it's uh, it's it's hard to explain. It's definitely upbeat, though. You know, it's definitely something that you know people are gonna play cruising in the car. Like, it's it's definitely definitely some very good vibes, you know. And uh, it's it's mostly mostly about like my relationship and whatnot, you know. But it's it's all it's all very positive, all love, you know. Yeah, yeah I think. Uh, I think it's what what we need right now. You know, there's a lot of there's oh, yeah. a lot of craziness going on. You know, so so something. You know, people I'm sure just anything new and positive is exactly what we need right exactly. now. <laughs> exactly, that's what I figured too. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna just gonna keep it happy and you know see see what happens. Awesome. But, and you, we were talking before we started recording that you go by just Murph, right? Yeah, yeah, on uh, on Apple Music and Spotify and everything, it's Murph. Now, let's talk about, because we did talk about, you know, like, how you got there. Because I, I had asked, I was like, so is it J-Dub or is it J-Dub Murph? Like, talk about the yeah. uh, the process of figuring out what you want your your uh, stage name or artist name to be. Because me, yeah, like, so- I, mean, I could do that process, but I'm too lazy, so I just go by my real name. No, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And sometimes, sometimes that's the way to go. I'm still, I'm still caught, you know, I really don't, I don't know exactly what I want it to be. But growing up, you know, it just kind of, 
it just kind of, that was my name, you know. Yeah, so everybody called you J Dub. Like every yeah, everybody knew me by by Murph or J Dub or whatever. You know, my Instagram's J Dub Murph. And my brother actually he gave me that nickname like way back in the day. Cause uh, my middle name's William, so the W, you know, J Dub. Yeah. And uh so that that stuck around for a while. But I talked to a couple friends, you know, I I was trying to get get some different opinions because I really wasn't sure what to do. And most most people told me to just, you know, just keep it Murph, just keep it simple. And I think I think that's the way to go for now. You know, we'll we'll see how I feel down the road. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, look at all the other artists with just one name. You got Drake, Logic, Prince. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, they all it's do not pretty well for themselves, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. If I do anywhere close to any of them, I'll, I'll be very happy. Absolutely. Well, Justin. Thank you for coming on. And we don't even know the name of the EP. You got to announce the name of, of the EP. Uh, the, the, it is titled Balance right now. Balance. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And my man Quentin Sano just finished the art for me. So I, uh, I might release the artwork early. I'm not, I'm not positive Ooh. yet. You might, you might see it sometime this week. You know, we'll see. That'd be awesome. But, uh, but yeah, I, I called it balance. You know, like I said, I've been skating since I was 12 years old. So balance obviously means a lot to me. But yeah, <laughs> that's what, but even in life, you know, I come to I've come to realize that's, you know, that's that's the way to succeed is you got to, you know, just balance everything out, stay positive. So I hope that's that's how I can make people feel from this EP, you know. Absolutely, man. That's awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. I'm glad we could talk hey. to you. Get to know sure. Murph before we get to listen to his music and see him <laughs> yes, prosper. <sir. laughs> Thanks for having me, bro. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man.